Hi everybody, my name is Hannah and this is Pepper and Pine and I have a botany lesson to share with you today. We are working through our live education Waldorf curriculum and we are up to the section on grasses and cereals and crops and I love this lesson and I really love our illustrations as well. Got a little bit carried away, didn't leave enough room for all of our content for this lesson but I am using my ABCs of nature as additional resource for this lesson as well as many of the lessons in our botany unit and there's this beautiful illustration illustration in here on crops and cereals, but I also have a couple other resources and my favorite one for this unit is called Botanicum. The illustrations in this book are phenomenal and they have been our illustration inspiration for many lessons, not just for this unit, but for other units as well. And for this one, we're going to be copying three images from this page on crops and cereals. We have our corn, our wheat, and our rice, and we're going to be putting that into our main lesson book. This measures nine and a half inches by 12 and a half inches. There are blank pages on both sides separated by an onion skin, which I usually take out, but I have added back in here as we are working through our lessons because I learned the hard way that if you don't have the onion skin in there you will get transfer from your artwork onto your previous pages. For this lesson I am using our General's Chalk Pastels for our fine detailed work and I also have our Sargent Art Square Chalk Pastels which I love. We use them on the chalkboard. We also use them in our main lesson book. You just want to make sure that you use a matte fixative when you are done with your illustration so that you can seal it and then it won't smudge on any of your other work and you can do that once you are done with your illustration and even before you do any of your writing. I'm sort of mapping out how I want to do this illustration, making sure that I get my three images and I decided to do corn first and rice in the center with the rice grains kind of going off onto both pages. And I'm starting out with my square chalk pastels and you can see how quickly and easily the basic look of your corn can come to life without too much extra work. And this would be sufficient. You could add the kernels, but this would be sufficient for your students to see and to copy. But I generally put a little bit more time and effort into my illustrations. This is a personal preference on my part, but I think that this is usually unnecessary for the students and actually the more detail you have sometimes I find that it complicates children copying the image and I do like to have an image for my students to copy that's in the same medium that they're going to be working in and so usually I will copy something out of another textbook or off the internet or from the main lesson book first and then they can copy that one sometimes we're working together and I'll walk my student through the process Process. But I found recently that me doing it first actually is a little bit easier for them, my student, to copy. So after I got the basic look of the corn, I came back in with my General's chalk pencils to add a lot of that detail that really brings this image to life. And from that, this is where it takes the most time, but from that, I really feel like it looks a lot more realistic. Next, I'm going to work on the rice. And again, I'm starting out with my Sargent Art Square Pastels. And again, very quickly, you can see an image appear that is just good enough. You don't, don't need to go very much further than this. The rice grains were just with some light peachy chalk pastels. But then I come back in with more of a muted red in order to define each of those grains, which again, that's what took most of the time. And we did choose these three grains primarily because of their popularity in being a staple food for different parts of the world, but also for the diversity of looking at these different foods from different areas of the world so that you could then add in a geography lesson if you wanted to, and also look at the migration of these different staples throughout the world because as you know, wherever you're living, you can have access to food variety from almost all over the world, especially grains that can be stored and that can travel and that can keep for long periods of time. The last one we're going to do is Emer Wheat and I started once again with our chalk pastels to give the basic gesture of the wheat 
and then we can come back in with the details and I really really love the way these three images turned out and I did get carried away there isn't much room for our written content we do manage to make it fit but I love how the crops take center stage for this lesson. Of course, we are studying the monocots at this point, and that's why we are doing these three, but we're also going to add in bamboo, palm, date palms, and coconut as well. I'm using my matte finish here in order to protect the work, and I found that it's easier for me to do this after the illustration, but before the writing. And please do this outside or in a well-ventilated area because it does smell a lot. But once this is done and dry and not smelling anymore, then it's really easy for us to do the written portion after we do the illustration. And this becomes the notes that I use in order to present the lesson. This also becomes content that my daughter can reread in preparation for her written work. And on occasion, she may copy portions of this written work into her main lesson book as well. I hope that you enjoyed this look at our crops and cereals main lesson for our Waldorf botany main lesson block. Don't forget to check out the blog post that accompanies this video for more information on all of the botany tutorials that I have as well as links to all of the resources that we have used for our botany main lesson block. You can find that link down in the description box below and if you'd like to see how we're homeschooling on a daily basis you can find me on Instagram and now on TikTok at Pepper and Pine.